I was tracking GBP and ZD during the time a lot of Brexit, a lot of Brexit news was coming coming out, and I was looking for this buy opportunity for uh, for about 500 pips, and I was tracking it for about two months, and then the opportunity finally came, and literally when I tell you, it was the one day that I decided to sleep in. <laughs> Instead of getting up off, of, instead of getting up and actually looking at the charts and go through my regular routine, and I missed the opportunity. Welcome to Trade Happy. Welcome back to another Traders Podcast episode. Sit back, grab a notepad and pen, and take some notes. If you are new here, please consider hitting the subscribe button for more podcasts just like this one. Traders, are you struggling with your FTMO challenge or maybe you're not sure about taking it just yet and you're looking for some tips? In this podcast episode, we have a 21-year-old trader. He's also an FTMO funded trader and he's also doing the 5% as a valuation as we speak. He's going to be giving his advice and answering some of those questions that I have for him around his FTMO challenge and how he's progressing. If you have any questions for him that you would like me to ask him, drop them in the comments below and I'm sure he'll be happy to reply to those. Please welcome Dakota. So for anyone that doesn't know who you are, can you just tell us a bit about yourself? So my name is Dakota J. Payne. I am 21 years old, uh, born and raised in Indianapolis, Indiana. uh, And I've been trading for a year and a half now. I first started while I was a sophomore in college. And in college, I was studying electrical engineering and I uh, found out I got introduced to Forex through a multi-level marketing company. Uh, didn't really like it. Went all in with uh, trading. I decided to leave college and put my full effort into it and uh, really try to become full time at uh, trading. So I got a mentor and here we are today. And when you started learning how to trade, um, how long did it kind of take you to actually take the challenge? So I took the challenge about a year after I started learning. Um, And I didn't really know about the challenge until around that time. A friend mentioned it to me and I... Thought it was interesting, but I didn't really look at it. I was like, I'm not trying to lose focus on um, building my own personal account. And then one day I was just decided to look at it and I was like, okay, this seems pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> so I took it. <laughs> so what did you do well during your challenge, do you reckon? You said, what did I do well? Yeah. Uh, so it was mainly patience and that's one thing that i really struggled with when while i was learning trading i was struggling with uh patients like the entire year and uh just having that criteria that ftmo set for me really built that for me and understanding that i have a certain period of time to do something allowed me to say okay i have this much time left this week does not have so much importance because if i lose this like if I lose this amount, I know I can possibly gain it back within the next three weeks. Yeah. And um, what strategy do you trade with? I mainly use simple price action, nothing too complicated. It's a dumbed down version of Elliott Wave Theory, pretty much. Really just impulse correction. Okay. And is that the same strategy that you used when doing the FTMO challenge? Pretty much overall. Um, like, like I said, I'm mainly a swing trader, so I do pay attention to the higher time frames. And with the FTMO being such a short period of time, uh, I look for the same setups. And all I really did to just go down to lower time frames and put smaller entries and critique my stop loss a little bit, basically looking at it as a fractal. Right. OK. And was it difficult going from the swing trading to that lower time frame trading it was for a period of time right because be, before the challenge like i said i thought it was going to be easy 
yeah. uh it, it was a little difficult it kind of showed me my flaws in in trading because um as i started to day trade intraday trade i noticed that i would rush myself and i wouldn't be as patient as i needed to be so it required me to take a few steps back sometimes uh maybe take a minute to meditate go read a book or do something else so i don't end up over trading so yeah. it required me to be very conscious and do you have any advice for swing traders that are looking to take the FTMO challenge? Yes. Number one advice, be patient. All right. That's probably the best thing that you can do. Like you have 30 days to accomplish that task. And uh, like you just have to be patient for your setup. It doesn't start until you get that, until you place that first trade. So don't, think as soon as you pay for it you have to immediately place a trade or you have to be placing a trade every day i didn't know that actually that it started the challenge once you took that first trade and also for the challenge uh i didn't know this when i initially took it you can actually hold trades over the weekend but when you get the real account you can't so oh, really? that's a little bit of bonus yep weird actually that you can do that whilst like in the little test but you can't do it Live? Yeah, <laughs> it's really uh, it was really disappointing <laughs> to me. Um, and you you briefly mentioned meditation. Is that something that you do like on a regular basis, or what? Yes. What do you do for that? So I meditate every day. Um, and it's a requirement for me to do it before I look at my charts, because I've noticed a big difference in between when I don't meditate before looking at charts and when I do. And uh, I know a lot of people have biases towards meditation, but honestly, it, all it's really doing is, at least the way that I use it, it's building your focus because throughout that meditation, you're focusing on breathing or you're focusing on, I know people like uh, imagine things while they're doing it. But it's just building your focus, uh, your focus muscles so that you can sit here for long periods of time and stay on task and without being distracted by other thoughts that are going on in your mind. And do you use an app for that or is it just do you like listen to music or anything? Yes, I generally uh, use a YouTube video and I use various YouTube videos. My favorite one's a 20 minute. Um, it's a 20 minute meditation. I think it's by. Uh, it, it escapes me for the moment. We could put but, that into the description uh, yeah. in case anyone wants to have a look and try some meditation. Um, so where did you, did you meditate before you got into trading or was that something that you found out um, after you started? I did meditate before I got into trading, um, but I was literally just starting before I found out about trading. I was... Uh, really trying to study for longer periods of time while in college and uh thought meditation could help me to focus a little bit better so i do five minutes five minute meditations throughout the day okay and what does your average day look like now so right now i go through my morning routine which includes working out uh reading and then meditation then i look at charts at least through week weekdays and in that period of time, in that period of time, while I'm looking at charts, I back test every day, uh, every weekday. And I do have a part time job. So afterwards, I work in the afternoon. And when I get back home, I either look at an interview, like a trading interview with uh, Etienne Crete, or uh, or I sit back and relax, like play a game or something like that. Okay. Uh, on weekends, it's pretty much the same thing. I'm studying, backtesting, trying to critique my trading. That's really all I do. Was it a difficult process for you to actually become a profitable trader with the patience and the discipline and all the routines in place? Absolutely. <laughs> I think uh, any serious change that you're trying to make to yourself is... Uh, is some in some way difficult because you're so locked into who you are at the moment 
uh, it's kind of hard to let go of that and become something better for yourself or what you believe can be better for yourself. Um, um, but all it really takes is just persistence to like get through that. Yeah, and if someone's starting their journey right now, kind of like one piece of advice to them um, in terms of something that you have seen that's improved your trading? I would say get a mentor because okay. you really need somebody that's been through it and that's accomplished the goals that you have set for yourself uh, so they can walk you through the fastest way so you like you can study their mistakes. And I, I really believe like that's that's the quickest way to get um, to get to the place where you want to be. Mm. And do you think people should um, just reach out to people or do you think they should do a course? I'd say reach out to people, like build a build an actual relationship with that person, because you, then you can get a little deeper understanding of their of their routine and see if you can implement in, that into their life. Because simply studying the course, uh, you get all the information, but you don't completely understand how that person utilizes it. You don't under, You don't really get a how can I say a, a, a clear picture of their vision? I'd say if you are going to be learning how to trade by yourself, let's say, so not going through a course, do you have any advice for someone that's developing a strategy? Back test as much as possible. Um, Cause like if you're developing a strategy, you have to put yourself in different situations in order to recognize if that's actually profitable over a long period of time or not. Now, um, with that backtesting, you have to be completely honest with yourself. You can't cheat and go back and say, oh, if I was if I was actually live trading, I would have caught this, so I'm going to take it down. You have to treat backtesting like it's a real account and uh, as well as demo trading. Like, And I know that may be difficult because there's not a money aspect to it, but you have to you have to do the best that you can to do that because that's the only that's where the real value comes from that that's where the real value comes from uh back testing and demo trading from your live trading do you have one trade that stands out to you in a good or bad way yeah everyone talks about their good trades i'll talk about uh one of my bad ones okay uh, uh so back in november hmm. I'd say it's more of a missed opportunity. It's so embedded into my brain. <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> I was tracking GBP and ZD during the time a lot of Brexit a lot of Brexit news was coming coming out, and I was looking for this buy opportunity for uh, for about 500 pips, and I was tracking it for about two months, and then the opportunity finally came, and literally when I tell you. It was the one day that I decided to sleep in <laughs> instead of getting up off <laughs> instead of getting up and actually looking at the charts and go through my regular routine. And I missed the opportunity. Wow. And um for some reason that just hurt way worse than actually losing the losing any trade. Like missing that opportunity that I uh, put a lot of work in and waited and was patient for, did all the right things for, and I was like Okay, I can't enter now. I'm waiting for my final confirmation. Yeah. So um, that was a real struggle for me. Probably the worst struggle. <laughs> well, I want to say that. But pro the, mo the most, uh, the most, the thing that thing. Uh, comes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at least it's kind of the thing of, um, it's better to not be in a trade than being in a losing trade. So obviously you didn't know whether that was going to be a winner or not. Um, so I guess kind of there's some light at the end of the tunnel of missing that oh. big trade because, I mean, it could have lost. Um, and you might have, you know, slept in and missed the losing trade. Absolutely. Um, and I definitely learned something from it too. Um, I took a – I talked to my mentor about it. And uh, he said exactly the same thing. And uh, talking about just moving on, there's always going to be another opportunity. Yeah. Like, um, 
that's not the end all be all. The market doesn't end as soon as you <laughs> miss that big opportunity that you were looking for. There's going to be more. Yeah, exactly. And you just touched on your mentor. Um, what are some of the lessons that you've learned from him that you're kind of willing to share? Uh, a really valuable piece of information that I've gotten from him, uh, which can be pretty difficult to understand, at least to beginning beginning traders, is less is more. Mm. Uh, like you do not need to catch every single move on every single pair. You don't have to be paying attention to ten different pairs at one time. Like all you really need, if you have the right strategy, is really one pair. Uh, like if you're able to capitalize off of opportunities here and there off of just one pair, you can reach your targets of five, ten percent, whatever you have per month. Um, and the more that you extinguish your focus across those different pairs, uh, it's really the less opportunities that you can truly take advantage of and basically benefit from in the end. Other than your mentor, is there anyone inside or outside of trading that you look up to? I have to say the first person <laughs> uh, is Elon Musk, like uh, outside of trading. Because I was, like I said, I studied electrical engineering. I, was, I really liked engineering. I wouldn't say I loved it, but um, I liked it. And uh, as I studied Elon Musk, read his biography and uh even seeing what he's doing with his companies, like uh, it's just really strong motivation for me because he persists despite despite any trouble that comes. Mm -hmm. And uh, it initially when I looked at people like that, I didn't see them, I didn't humanize them, if that makes sense, like the celebrity effect. But when you humanize a person and you see the trouble that they go through, and then you, they still persist and continue toward those goals. It's a uh, very motiv motivational, at least for me. Yeah. And um, was there anyone inside of trading? Mark Douglas, even though he's passed, uh, yeah. he's a. Uh, I've studied Mark Douglas my entire, my enti almost the entire time <laughs> that I've been trading, besides the beginning. Uh, and I think that's that's a key thing that has allowed me to be consistent so fast, like understanding that there's a major psych psychological aspect uh, to trading pretty much to anything. And uh, he's really, his teachings really helped me develop into a better person as well as a better trader. I only kind of came across him a few years into my trading. And I think that anyone that actually learns from him when you're just getting into trading, it's going to be really, really beneficial. What would you say makes you a profitable trader? The habits that I ingrained in myself. Uh, because you have to, in order to be consistent in trading, you have to be consistent pretty much in your life as well. Uh, you have to consistently wake up. You have to consistently be at the charts at, at a specific time. You have to have a specific plan. Uh, so being consistent in other aspects of my life, uh, you can ultimately, when you become consistent as a trader, you're not trying to be consistent. It's just something that naturally is happening. Yeah. Uh, if I were to give a technical aspect of it, besides building consistency and other aspects of your life, uh, proper risk management, making sure your risk is under control and making sure you have a solid uh, risk management plan. Yeah, yeah. And I think if you're consistent outside of trading, it's much easier to be consistent inside of trading. So I've probably got, it's going a little bit off of top. When you, when you started trading, did you have a plan of being a prop trader or did you have a plan of trading other people's money um or did you what was the reason you actually started trading so definitely didn't have a plan to trade for a prop firm or anybody else um i was actually really scared to trade for other people because 
I was losing so much money and I knew people would be really mad at me. <laughs> um, but um, my plan, like I've always wanted to have freedom and basically not be tied down to a job. And while, while in college, that was still my goal before trading. I knew that even though I'm studying engineering, even though I may get a job after this, I ultimately want to be able to work for myself and be able to build my own schedule and uh, basically become, build the per build a character that I want to turn into. Uh, so yeah, really that aspect of uh, personal freedom to control my day. And do you have like any plans in the future? Um, where do you see yourself in? three to five years so yeah so i'm actually building a community uh through discord and youtube i want to be able to uh build a educational course that really hones in on the psychological aspect of trading uh, i honestly don't see that too often I, there's maybe bits and pieces throughout courses but uh I don't believe like the students really take it seriously. Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah, definitely next step for me after becoming full time <laughs> is to actually uh, actually build that website and course. Okay, nice. Um, and what's some um, unconventional advice that you would give to a trader that's looking to succeed? Go all in with it. Not with your account, not with trading. <laughs> Go all in with your effort, like put in every ounce of effort that you can to master your strategy, to ensure that to your back testing, to your demo trading, to all the practice time, because you don't want to look back on right now, like these few years that you're studying trading and say you didn't give it your all. I think that's like to look back on something that you you had a goal for, but you didn't really try and you just gave up within it. That's um, demoralizing and um, I believe it would be hard to uh, it's a hard it's a hard thought to accept in, in my mind. Mm. And is there anything else you would like to say? And also, where can people find you? Uh, so. You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, and pretty much any social media platform under Dakota J. Payne. And uh, also my Discord channel. And like in the Discord channel, it's just a nice little community. Uh, I send out charts. We communicate, basically get opinions on charts from each other and help each other through the journey. Okay, great. Well, thanks for coming on to the podcast today.